Hello team. Uh, today I wanted to talk about a couple of things, uh, a couple of topics that came up during our scrim yesterday. Uh, the first thing that came up was the Winston Ryan combination. The Winston Ryan combination is a brawl versus brawl variation that's good earlier, earlier on in the match and when the enemy team is expected to be very grouped up. Uh, source uh, temporal Lijong Tower map guide, I think. Um, so at the start of these matches on this map, uh, many teams like to TP into this window. And when they TP out of the window, uh, everyone is grouped up either right here or right here, depending on which direction they go. And if our Winston and Ryan jump out right here, they can just hit the entire team with a bunch of damage right at the start of the game. Uh, and that's why this is particularly good for winning this first fight when you expect the other person to TP in the window. Um, the D.Va is more effective later in the game because D.Va, of course, can eat ultimate abilities and <clears throat> she's better against other comps because she can fly at their flankers and stuff. But yeah, let's see what's going on here. So I'm just going to have this play while I'm talking. Actually, it's too loud for me to play. Uh, let's just skip to the fight and see what happens. Oh, bam. So our Winston got a ton of value for reasons mostly unrelated, <laughs> but anyway. Um, uh, APG stated that shouldn't they be playing Doomfist, and that's correct, but Junkrat does essentially the same thing, so I didn't really feel like talking about it during our scrim. Uh, they both get value immediately after leaving the, the teleporter, as opposed to a Mei, who um, sometimes gets value, but not always. If Actually, I don't know. It's it's iffy there. But the Winston Ryan is better for winning the first fight. I know that one for sure. Um, the second thing was that... Uh, Judge was playing Winston. Okay. But I didn't know that. Uh, but... Someone asked if they were to swap to D.Va. I thought that that was Zoo. And so now I'm questioning things. But uh, in this case, if... We were trying to say if we should swap the Winston to D.Va. Uh, D.Va would have been probably the better option if they had a May or McCree. Because then you could eat the High Noon or... Um, or fucking Blizzard names. <laughs> um, okay. But generally, in in this game, unless you're going to get a ton of value with the swap, you don't you don't really want to swap in this game, because ultimate charge is super important. And I'll talk about situations where we are to swap at a different time. Um, but just keep that in mind. Ult charge strong. <laughs> Hello. Okay. When it comes to attacking Onomer A, we didn't have any difficulties, and it seems like we got a pretty good understanding, but I'm just going to say something anyway, because it came up. Um, one common strategy to attack Onomer A with Dive is you can have D.Va fly up through this window, up even onto the top of here, and that gets her into position to, in four seconds, go on a dive, and someone who's on point or over here or anywhere else nearby and that generally helps you open up the choke you can also have your tracer and sombra well sombra can go wherever she wants but tracer can go through and up here if someone's over here ball can of course ro roll through and go to point uh, all things like that um, whenever a dive happens that takes the attention off of people in the front line so that people in the front line can move through for free. And as soon as that happens, everyone can just run through, come through this door or go up these stairs and you get free space. So there you go. Oh, one thing that I forgot to mention is in order to make uh, this, flight path, ah, this flight path possible as D.Va, 
Sometimes there will be like a Brig or an Ana over here. Um, or even someone up here like a Lucio who can boop you down. It's a very uncommon strat, but sometimes it works where you fly at one of those characters and then you immediately change direction. So like, let's just assume I'm a D.Va, I'm going like this, kind of too slow. Uh, and then just immediately dart away and then dart back. And you can usually dodge whip, whip shot or sleep dart and sometimes boot. So there you go. Okay. So this one's to Saucy, specifically. Uh, a couple times during our scrim, maybe you heard me say that um, I, I was saying, Brig, you should back up, and stuff like that, uh, a couple times. Um, maybe you were wondering why I was asking you to do that. So this is a pretty obvious example right now, and not all the situations were so obvious, but... Um, Generally, I understand that, especially as Brig Zen against a rush comp, their primary goal is to get on top of both of us and take us down. And we stand the best chances of winning this fight if we can stay away from them as long as possible. Uh, and as well, generally, with Brig, you want to stay away from people as long as you can. So what you should what you should kind of do in your head with Brig is assume that you're or imagine that you're playing a character with a very long range weapon like an Ana and position like you were like you were actually playing them even though you don't have a very long range weapon. Uh, assume primary fire doesn't exist and you only have your whip shot. <laughs> your whip shot and your bash when people get close. So let's see. You can see what I'm doing during this time to see what I'm trying to talk about. So I end up actually being able to escape there. But you probably saw it as well. Maybe in the moment and definitely when I, when I was looking at it here. In this specific situation. Uh, okay. Now, moving on. Okay, so attacking Hanamura second. I have a bit more of a detailed point about this one. Uh, this one's about respawn mechanics and what we need to do in stall situations, uh, when we're facing stall situations. Okay, so let me just read my post, because that'll be easier. Um. Defender respawn timers are increased as long as there are more attackers on the point than defenders, not by how many attackers are on the point. Furthermore, there is a 10 second delay, a full respawn cycle, before any respawn timer increases are applied. Their respawn timer increases gradually go up in... Again, fuck. Their respawn timer increases... Increases up to five seconds as long as this condition is held. An important thing to note is that if defenders are allowed to reach the point, they effectively reduce their respawn timers, the respawn timers of their teammates. So you want to stop them from getting on the objective as as much as you can. Um, okay. Most of that information is from source. Overwatch Gamepedia on Assault and Respawn, and on Carq's How Respawn Mechanics Actually Work. Uh, so my point with this is that we should stuff the spawn doors to prevent respawns from reaching the objective. So what I mean by this is by uh, physically placing ourselves near the spawn doors so that we can body block if we need it, and that we're in a good position to shoot players that are leaving it. So when they're leaving the spawn doors, um, they have to walk through a choke, right? And when they're walking through the choke, that gives you a much higher percentage chance of killing them, which will add 10 more seconds to their respawn, which is a good, good, good strat. Uh, and 
And of course, you kill them, they don't go to point, and then they don't reduce the respawn times of their allies, essentially. Um, what else was I going to say? Beware of players switching to Widowmaker or Ana to mess with you if you're holding the spawn doors, of course. Um, but yeah, generally having three people on point and three people stuffing the spawns is optimal. For the future, we'll have our off tank and both DPS responsible for stuffing the spawn rooms. Uh, you should all state which which door you're stuffing. So like you can have off tank go left and both DPS go right, for example. And in some ultra rare situations, having only one player on the point so that two players can stuff both spawns is preferable. 